Good evening. Welcome to Lockdown Workshop. I'm Mark, your host. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, what do we got? What do we got tonight? Uh, so we've just finished off a couple of bikes. You've probably seen the other video. To be honest, flipping millions of bikes. Uh, it's just gone bike mad. Uh, if I thought it was a viable thing, I'd, I'd go set up a bike shop, but um, I'm not that naive. Um, I'm only busy because I'm free. Uh, and I do actually fix stuff without charging them a fortune because I'm free. Um, but some of these repairs, you know, they're running into 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 pounds. Um, you know, so then you imagine that, you know, one of them particularly, if you remember that, that white giant, um, I was probably into that for about 15 hours. So, 15 hours worth of work on that. Okay, I was filming, I was faffing around, I had to make some tools. If I had a bike shop, I probably would have had the tools. If I had a bike shop, probably wouldn't have even entertained it. Um, but, you know, even then, five hours, 30, 50 quid an hour, you know, you're quickly getting up to, um, you know, if you then, you then you'd have to buy proper parts as well instead of the parts that I'd buy. Um, I'm not saying that they're not proper parts. The parts I buy are actually sometimes better than the giant parts, but um, you're probably more inclined if you're running it as your own business with the insurance and everything, you, you're probably more inclined to go and buy the giant parts and then then you're probably looking at instead of a you know 15 to 20 quid for a set of bearings, you're probably looking at 60 to 80 quid for a pair of bearings. So it is what it is. Maybe maybe one day. Maybe one day. Uh, right, so what we got? We have a uh, now, is it a Qualcast or is it the, um, uh, well, let's face it, everybody's had a go at these. It is a Qualcast. So I think Bosch owned them last. Um, that might not even be the collector off this one. That might be the collector off the Kawasaki we've got. I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, this is the first one we bought when we first moved into this house after I killed the um, the spinny spinny one the uh, the rotary yeah the rotary mower um, so we bought a cylinder mower because we had like kind of really flat lawns that liked imperial stripes um, it's a flathead Tecumseh engine four stroke don't know how many cc's to be honest um, you can see it's actually quite a good nick. Yeah, the spark plug's shiny. I don't think I've ever replaced that. It's had about two or three services, um, and we've had it about 20 years. Um, it's not running right. Um, we've got four of these now. My wife appears to have this thing about buying them, and somebody gave us one as well. So we've got four petrol ones of varying different ages and genres. And we've even got an electric version of it as well. well the reason we like this is because you can take the, uh, the cylinder out. Um, it comes out on a cassette and you can drop a um, Skyfire cassette straight in. Um, and that's brilliant. The electric one's behind there. I can just see the wheels of it, but it's buried. I'm not going to show you that. So um, I actually think that this is the better engine. The Tecumseh engines are actually really good, but they've got a couple of four balls. Uh, the carburetor is a little bit finicky and it's really difficult to uh, find these um, um, these these bits here. So invariably what happens is that um, your float bowl generally sticks um, and then it ends up flooding the, the engine and this with, uh, with fuel and then it eats away at that. So this is a new one, but I think I bought this about 10, 15 years ago. So I just have to keep blowing it out because I just don't seem to be able to find anywhere that sells them. If you know anybody that sells them, tell me. And I think the original plastic basket rotted as well, so I had to replace that. Um, and I can't remember if, I, if it's because I keep putting this in the wrong place as well as a little tab, that's it, right. Yeah, it has to go there to stop all the detritus from getting sucked in there. Uh, the other annoying thing as well is the little sticker that says choke and non-choke is missing as well. So then you generally have to take that off, shove your finger inside and go, Right, choke off, choke on. Because you would think when it's pointing that way, it's a, 
it, it should have a clear access through. But no, no. It, and you can when you turn it that way, it'd be blocked off. But no, it's not. It, it's completely, that's choked. That's unchoked. Um, so at the moment, to make it run, you can have to have it halfway in between. And even then, it's got no power when you're um, pushing on the accelerator. It's dying. Um, it's idling okay, so I think the main jet's slightly blocked, or it's getting starved for, starved for fuel. Um, they do suffer from crap coming out the tank, and like I said, getting stuck in the, the float bowls. So I have got um, um, a Briggs and Scrappen um, inline filter that, that will work with a small gravity fed tank. If you try and stick one of these paper automobile filters on, it won't work. It'll just clog your, it'll clog your line up. The other problem we have as well is because of that, sometimes you find out that it fails and then the entire contents of your um, tank has drained out onto the floor. So I'm also going to put a, um, an inline tap on them now as well. So fuel filter, inline tap to go on. I'll probably have a look at the fuel line, see if the fuel line is replacing. Um, it is, um, it's not running very well at all. So uh, we will, we'll have a look at it. We'll give it a service. We'll change the oil as well. And we'll, we'll get it working. Uh, the drive bands are, are beyond knackered on this. So um, we'll give that a whirl. Um, I don't know whether to change the oil first, but if I change the oil, I've got to crank it up. So if I crank it up, it's going to get hot. But I, I know it's knackered anyway. So it, it just splutters and dies as soon as you try to put the, the any any throttle on it, uh, or as soon as you try to apply any load to it, it just it just stalls. It's got no power. Um, it did sound last time um, when I was trying to choke it with my hand to make it run better. Um, it did. Um, start ingesting oil and got very smoky so um, that was either because I'd over choked it and it just sucked some oil around the uh, the piston rings or the engine is getting worn like I said it's quite old and it has done quite a lot of miles on it even though it looks new but these things can run forever so I would be surprised I suspect it was me over choking it and I created such a vacuum that you got nowhere to go no other way of releasing the, the vacuum than to suck oil past the, uh, the the rings. It could be the rings are a bit sticky and that. I really don't want to take the heads off because um, I'd have to get a gasket set for it almost certainly. I don't think it's blowing around there. Uh, there is a lot of shit around the, the cooling fans, so I will take the tinware off and blow that out as well because that's another common problem with any of these air-cooled engines is that you let the you let the detritus build up around there. So there's a fan in there that sucks air in through there and blows it across the top of the engine around these cooling fins. So if that gets full full up with stuff like that, or the critters have moved in, it blocks the cooling vents off on the other side and no air's getting through. So I'll take the tins off and we'll have a look at that. We'll take the covers off and we'll stick a new belt on because that's the other thing, it's slipping as well. Um, you can pull the drive for the, the belt all the way up. So if you pull the Put the drive on it's actually that one you pull that all the way up and it's not spinning and then eventually it'll catch so the drive for the uh, props gone now i did buy some bands last time they are in here somewhere but again one of the bands you can't get so what i did last time is i bought another band at roughly the right size so we'll try that in it and then i will write it down somewhere and then we'll reuse that one or we can adjust it get a slightly smaller one because if you just buy generic bands that are the right gauge thickness length and everything they are a fraction of the price price of buying the Tecumseh or the Qualcast or the Briggs and Scrapham um, equivalents. You know, you, you like looking at 30, 40 quid for a, for a band that you can buy for a fiver off flea bay. Anyway, right, we've talked enough. Let's uh, get it up on the bench if I can. <coughs> <laughs> we're back right uh yeah it's in a bit of a state i really don't want to clean it up here i'll uh we'll give it a blast off with the uh the air hoses later so let me uh, spin it around so you can see what i'm doing i haven't got a posh lift like uh crusty one and uh mr corden so you will have to make do um what i will do though is i will 
just to save time and effort, uh, I will get the so major left fibers, aren't they? I don't know which side I wanted to get off. So that's water. I hope it's not filled it full of water. Right. Spin it around this way then. I was right first time. You can see what I'm up to. First things first, let's get this off. So you have to they have to take the the side cover off to get to the uh, um, the cassette, the, uh, the Scarify cassette anyway. So these are always a nightmare. You spend you spend all your time sitting there with an Allen key just spinning them off. You try and cheat and just pull a little, pull them off a little way. See if you can get it just past that. There's a tab there. There's always, but there's not actually. There's a big lump behind there that's going to come through there. As well. Full of water. That's gross. That's why you shouldn't leave them outside, but unfortunately, the workshop was full and under the house was full because they're bloody breathing these things. We'll give to clean out while we're here. Right, so one of these is new and one of them is absolutely knackered. So I think that's the drive and it's the one behind. Where is it that one's the? Ah, now that's interesting. I might have replaced this one already. Let's just have a look. Yeah, that's been replaced. So if that if that isn't working then it's just that it needs adjusting. So what we need to do is work out which one of these it is. It's that one. So you adjust these by cracking off that and just winding it out. Maybe for 10 mil. So I've just stuck the uh, uh, the ultrasonic cleaner on. See if I can reach this now. trying to do is just uh, see if it's tight enough that I can still spin this without it uh, without it catching but the problem is this is uh, I don't think this has been set right somebody's over tightened it and by somebody I mean my missus I lost one of them from somewhere oh. this one here Interesting. We've got a spare one. The, uh, it just cap off a high pressure. I'm usually shorter then for some reason. Right, so we're just slacking this off so it spins free. Uh, big screwdriver. So there's two screws in here, and when you wind them down, it, it, it either pulls it up or pulls it down, uh, and it's the plate underneath. So. I'm going to find out now whether I've remembered it the right way around. I think you undo them to make it slacker. Yeah. You can still hear it's, it's, uh, it's grating, so I think somebody's had that too tight. Right, so that 
that's okay that's not that's still able to slip in there so we can put a bit more on this now turning the engine. You should never do that with the spark plug on, just in case. Especially because that isn't actually off either, so potentially I could have started the engine then, because that would have been sparking, and that would have been my fingers. Right. So we will, uh, once we've cleaned it up, we'll retrim that back in. But at the moment, I just want it to spin free. Um, I think the uh, the other one was okay. Yes, yeah, so that's fine. That one. I don't need to do anything with that one. We could we could put a bit on it just to just to say we've done it. Just say we're going to crack it off, wind it out a bit. And bring it back in again. They do, they do play over time, and as the belts wear out. Right, so that's that done. Uh, right, next job. Got my uh, fuel. Uh, nips, they are in the other toolbox in the garage, which I'm pretty sure isn't down here. It is up in the other. Or is it? Do you know what? I don't know. It might be over there. We don't want to damage the fuel line any more than it's already damaged. Now I've just done that to it. Hopefully this is the right size. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've forgotten I'd uh, fetch everything down from the uh, from the garage. So I should be able to uh, knock this off now. And I've got some new uh, things for these. What I haven't got though, which I, what I could do with. Now that's interesting, that's loose in there, which is never a good sign. Because these elbows do have a habit of falling out. So I need to be really careful now. Of course, because I'm trying to show you, which I don't even know if you can see what I'm doing. Possibly, maybe. I've got the sun in my eyes. Usually, once you've gone round it a couple of times with this, it slackens them off. Yeah, because they're usually a bit perished at the end anyway. And it should have a clip on like that, really, not a, uh, not a jubilee. So we will get that off, get the carburetor off, no, it's all good, the carburetor is absolutely too far through it. Right, handy cam, don't know if you can see that, let me uh, turn, turn the flashlight on, you can see now. So that's pretty scabby. Um, I'm concerned that that looks fairly blocked up around there. We'll, we'll find out when we get that off. We'll strip all that lot off. I'll take the manifold off. I've never done it in any of the other services. We'll get the tins off as well, uh, and then we'll get that stripped down and put it in the uh, in the washer. What's going off out here? Chinning at children. Yeah, you can see it's all pretty. It hasn't been uh, 
hasn't had much love in the last uh, few years this right get that off next to see what's going on in there get the tins off I think the recall was a bit funny as well it wasn't yeah it's not going all the way back in um, there's usually a little thing you can oil in there so we'll have a look at that we'll have to put a bit of, bit of love in moved you around to the other side because I can't get the shot without getting the sun oh I can't the light's still on as well so turn the light off so uh, we'll get that off I think you get the recoil off with just them them bolts there I think it's just two um, don't know if I want to try doing that with it. Yeah. I don't even know if it goes small enough. I think I might be a bit uh, end up tiddly. Only nine. Get this off first, anyway. Got a bit some ticking off in there. Now, there should be another bolt somewhere. That's one. I think there's possibly one round the other side as well. I hope that's not it under there because I can't get to it if it is. Oh, it's another one of them, is it? The uh, the the edge on these is so dished down that on some of these bolts then there's not enough to get them out that's 10 mil spanner is on 10 mil spanner is already out That doesn't want to come off. What's up with that? Oh, there it is. No, they're not nines. I wonder if they're, I wonder if they're imperial. Big dog. I do feel slack. What do you have to make? I think these are imperial. Interesting. Yep, they're imperial. That's probably why it won't come off. No, I didn't think these Briggs and these these to come for engines had imperial uh, fasteners on. That is interesting. Could be explaining why they're all falling off. So in that case, that will be. Yep. Imperial. Oh, another. That's why you don't chuck your Imperials out. Low battery already. I understand a new battery in. Yeah, been we, were, we were waffling a while. And it's warm. tapping screws you just love them you get them out and then you hit the tapping part of it again and then you have to get the spanner on them again muscular screws once you've got them going that's it
Right. <laughs> the plot thickens. Move some stuff if I end up drowning in my own crap. So there is another bolt and it's right under there where my finger is. So I'm not even sure I can get a spanner in there or even the bolt out. Um, but also I've got to get this, I think I've got to get that off as well to get this off. Or well, maybe not, maybe that comes off with it. Now the other, the other one I took off on that side doesn't appear to do anything. So I'm now wondering if there's another bolt hidden under there I can't. See, and the only way I'd be able to do that is if I took the engine off, but it's actually only four bolts to take the engine to move it, but then it's all what's under here as well, because I know there's a drive shaft and everything under there, but it's like a conical it's a tooth thing with some rubber bushing in between it, because I had to fix it's a donut. It's a universal joint donut, like they have on Lotus Alone cars. So don't ask me how I know that. I was just watching way too much Wheel of Demons. Um, so I need some imperial spanners now because I don't think the 10 is going to cut it and the 9 is too small. So what was that? No, nope, not that one. No, nope, not that one. It was the one I've just had. I'll put it back in the box. Yeah, it's here. What is it? So three eighths. Have I got a three eighths? Oh god, that is old. That's that's an English metric. So that's an across the flats. Actually, that might be. No. That's not what we've got. Here. We do have some materials in here. There's not many of them. They're all they've all been consigned to a. Uh, What's this one? I think that's not across the flats. No. It's another dodgy one. So we've got we've got two that one's cracked as well. Neither of them fit. I suspect that's the same size as that. No, it needs to be needs to be smaller. I think. What a stupid thing. Nobody uses imperial bolts apart from our septic friends. Well, that's another 10. The trouble is the 10s just likely to strip off the head. I don't know. I think that could, uh... Come on, then. So I'll get this all done, I won't be able to get it back in again. Right, we're going in. Cuba time lapse.
there's another one under there. How the hell are you supposed to get? There's another one there. There's absolutely no way you can get to that without taking the engine off there. Now this, what I'm doing here, is considered something you do, you're do. you supposed to do as part of your general service of an air cooled engine. So that seems really shit that for this engine, for this lawnmower, you have to take the engine off its bed because I've I've now disengaged that from the donut. So now I'm going to take that off to get that back in the donut. 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 Where's the tin? I wonder whether they are a tin. I just stripped it off with stupid rolls. I know what that's on because at some point it's going to fall off. Um, yeah, there is. There's a bit of debris in there. Yeah, it's not brilliant. It's, it, I'm more concerned that it's blocked up the cooling things on the actual. So there's a big mat of it around there I've just pulled off, so it was actually blocking up the fan. So. There's a question about how effective the fan would have been. There's definitely um, something blocked on this side here. That's all blocked. So if we get that one off. That's probably an eight. I would guess. Yeah, it's an eight. So they aren't imperial. I must have just skimmed enough off it. Cause it's a bit of an issue. Let's just get these off. Oh, right. That's interesting. Right, that is it. So that's a bit of a no-no. So that's that bit there has completely blocked up all the cooling for this side of the engine. So that could quite possibly mean that we have blown a head uh, gasket. That's generally what happens. We'll put it back together. We'll give it a run. See if it's. Uh, that might explain it. I'm not seeing any signs of blow by because you would see it around here because that's where it would go. There's a, there's a little bit of muck there, but it doesn't look like we've, we've blown it. Um, I don't know what the torque settings are for the heads on these, but what we'll do is we'll see if there is anything in them anyway. Yeah, probably 13. It's a 12. That was definitely a 13. So I use a small socket. No, we won't use a medium socket. So sometimes when they've got hot, now that actually was a bit loose. Could be the head's got hot and it has come loose. So then back ones are nice and tight. But these front ones are definitely I don't know what the uh, that front one definitely. That one's very loose. Right, I oh, will see if I can find 
hundred impact meter pounds apparently, which uh, I think is uh, about sixteen foot pounds. Well, I haven't got a conversion scale, have me? Not one of the foot pounds. Guess what? Nobody measures anything in inch pounds. Why do you have a measurement in inch pounds? So I just divided it by 12 anyway. Seems like a fair estimate. Um, right. So we've cleaned all that cap out, so we can put all this lot back together now. Uh, and hopefully that'll work. Uh, cue another time lapse. Yankees supposed to live in there as well. Probably they, they never seem to leave it in there. There's that screw on the Yankee. Seem to remember that's the screw. To remember, in which case that's not, uh, it doesn't appear to be doing it anyway. I know what it is in a minute. I suspect it's an anarchy in there. That's just dropped in there. Huh. It was both. It was a flat. That's why the flat where it works. It's a flat and a posi. Uh, Phillips, not a uh, posi. It's a bit battered to death, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, that looks like it's got hot or something. Oh, and it's full of grass. What a surprise! I think it was like that last time I did it. So you can see how it works now. So there's a donut on the drive shaft there, and the, these donuts do wear out. So that's a, that's a new donut that, and then that just slides into the cell of it. But we're not gonna. We'll 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 stick its we'll stick its bottom back on first, uh, and we will try and assemble that. A little bit of metal that it belongs to. Yeah, I kind of wish I'd taken that off there. Oh no, flat and that, we will be in trouble. It smells very fuelly. Right, um, we need to put this on as well. Before we find out that we've gone that far that we can't get it on. Let's just 
side casing. Which doesn't fit on there, so I suspect we've got different size bolts without realising it. Or possibly it had a washer on it. Definitely all the same size. Yep, except for that one that had a washer on. Yeah, so never never do these up fully until got all the bolts starting to screw in. Look very silly. I'll then get these hidden gems under here in place. The, uh, the acid bath's getting up to a decent temperature now. I have a feeling I'm going to be turning this upside down in a minute because I can't. On, in you go. This is proper annoying. I can't, I can't quite tip it over because because it's leaning on me. Let's see, we're in, we're in. That's working well, now it wants to go in. Right, so you go down there and tip up the other way. We're tighten up this one. We back, yes, right. Sorry, ran out of card storage this time. Right, just checking I've got all of these. I'm not going to check the talk sessions on them. Yeah, that, that, I think that's that bolt that I spun last time. So, right, so we've done that one, we've done that one. Got the little one on the front to put in, which hmm, that's interesting. That's 
do this one. Slacking off of that one. So it's about don't don't do up the tins until you've got all the bolts in. Well, I've done this side one up and I haven't got the. Uh, back up again now. I don't know what them two screws are from. I wonder what they're from. Right, so the uh, record on the outside. Right, this is being particularly awkward. We're biting at last. Being very cooperative, that one's going in. I just wanted a bit of persuasion. Right, what do I do with that Allen key? Quite get enough purchase on the iron key to do anything up as tight as you'd like without ripping your fingers to pieces. And then you've just got to go through the slow, painful agony of trying to get it to tighten up. This can rotate these round at almost 180 degrees. The ones on the front, I was getting less than 90, and 60 more like. Just got enough to get into the next index position. The uh, the ultrasonic's getting nice and warm as well, which is good. This one on the other hand, I'm getting about 90 out of it. That's it. Right, 
other than a really good clean and a, an oil change now, I'm pretty much there. Um, I've got to put this back on. That, that, that should have a tab that sits in there, but I think it got broken off. I might have broken it off in sheer frustration of having to do a stupid tab. I think the latter's probably more likely. Are you biting or not? Good enough. Oh, it's all kicking off in the house again. Uh, right, um, we've just got to get the carburetor off and we need to do the fuel as well. I don't know whether to, which to do first. Um, these are flipping awkward to get off. They're a nine. I can't remember now. One of these. See if they've got a. They have got a weird size on them. These could very well be imperial. It's more surprising if it's not imperial. There's there's way too much slack on there. It's got to be imperial. The nine doesn't fit, but the the ten is too much slack on it. Cord. I can't see that there's anything I can do to that one. It's not like the, uh, the Briggs and Scrapham ones. What's interesting as well, there's nothing to take the play out of the throttle on this. So that's pretty scabby. We'll have a we'll have a look at that in a minute. In a, yeah, there's a little bit of fuel left in it. on the safe side. Stop anything getting in there. Not sure what would get in there but uh, right what can we do now? Uh, I need to take that to pieces. We've seen to this so that seems to be all in good shape now. We've got to do that. Uh, spark plug we haven't had a look at the spark plug yet have we? That's a big boy. It's the biggest one we've got, I think. Yeah, it's pretty sooty. It's not too bad, though. It's Now, I don't know if this is right, so please uh, tell me if it is, but they say you shouldn't uh, wire wool these in case any wire wool or, or on the thing gets down in the back of there. And what they say you should do is turn it off with this. If that's made it worse, I think. Might just look a little bit better. <laughs> hey, how? Leave it in there now. Uh, probably ought to shift something down in there. Oop, that's 
quite a bloody worm now. You don't want to touch that. What else have I got I could shove down in that hole? Tissue. Uh, right, I didn't really want to strip the carburetor down on it because it's a bit, it's a bit mucky, a bit lawnmower being up here and all that. So let me shift the lawnmower because I don't think there's a lot we can do with this now until we've got the uh, carburetor cleaned and then the fuel system. So we might not even need it back up again. So let me, uh, let me just wrestle it to the ground. shouldn't do a car better in amongst the pile of shit that you've just blown out of the lawnmower. Collection of musty like tools. That's all we need. The barrel, float bowl. No, nope. that's one up. 13. Is there 13 really? It is as well. Look at that. Right, just visual inspection. It, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty clogged up. And what I'll do is before we start, we'll just try and clear some of this out. See, musty, musty light tools. It always has a good pick at stuff. You know what? Sometimes that's the best thing. I, I could give it a blast off with. In fact, I probably will in a minute. Let me just dig out some of the worst stuff. The trouble is, if I put the, if I get the airline on it, it's just going to make a right row. But I really don't want this lot going in the parts washer if I can avoid it. Right, we'll give that a quick blast though. You can hear it now. That's what I didn't want to happen. So these have got an entry hole in the bottom, so you have to make sure that that's clear because that's what feeds the jet in the middle. You just thought I did bikes. There we go. So that's not too bad. It's got E10 fuel in, so it's not. Uh, it's got. Sorry, it's got E5 fuel in, so it's got low ethanol fuel in. So I won't expect it to be gummed up, and we do generally drain them down. There's a bit of muck in there. You can see there's a few grainy bits. Possibly even a bit of water. I saw some beading on the bottom. Um, there's not a lot of fuel in there either which is a bit worrying. Uh, I did think I did run it. Mind you, I haven't said that though. I think I did run it out of fuel. It's got a little dent there. Um, that's probably not the best thing in the world for the... Uh, can't find it now. That's better. So I'll go in the parts washer anyway. That, that's just a release valve, so you can empty the muck out. You can see there's, there's, there, there is some muck in there. We'll get it in the uh, in the parts washer. Um, 
I do have somewhere. Let's have a look. What's the smallest we've got? Well, I think it's one of these two. Yeah, that did feel a bit crusty there. So those holes have got to be clear. And that hole down the middle has got to be clear as well. But unfortunately, it is either blocked which would explain why it's not running very well. <coughs> Let me get some carb cleaner. I think I have got some. There we go. Ah, that is coming through now. So that's part of the jetting um, and then you've got the emulsion tube up there which I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get out uh, so there's no uh, there's no uh, rubber tip on that, so which means there's a rubber seat at the bottom of there, which I may or may not be able to see. Um, there does appear to be some rubber down there. Now, I did have a carb rebuild kit for these, um, and they have been rebuilt once, but that doesn't necessarily mean I've done them properly. And I don't know where the carb rebuild kit is now, because I had a spare one. I suspect it's over there in that pile, so we might have to go and have a look for that. We'll take the uh, we'll take the seal off because I may or may not have another one of these, and we don't want that to go in the acid bath. Um, oh, where's my little screwdriver? We'll use an electrical. No, we won't use an electrical screwdriver. We'll find a own any proper screwdrivers anymore so we've got a big one we've got a not so big one and there should be another one somewhere it's in here can't see it i chucked it on the floor hmm. have we filed it somewhere just uh, shout if you can see it. Yeah. Oh, I can see it. It's everywhere. With the other, with the other Allen key that I can't find. The four mil Allen key that always manages to disappear. Right. Hopefully this will fit down the tube. Now I don't know if this one screws or pushes out for this one, but there's definitely a rubber seal there. I'm not really that familiar with these uh, Tecumseh ones. Now sometimes you can, it does look like it's plastic, sometimes you can uh, you can push them out. Let's uh, take this off. Oh, they felt actually like they were, they were posies. They were unnecessarily tight. I'll right, just make a note of how that goes up just in case. I'll try and keep it in the same orientation in here, just in case there's something weird about it. There's another gasket as well, we need to get that off. That lives that way round. No holes anyway. Sometimes you get extra extra holes in there. Mm, I can't get it through from this side either, I don't think. 
Oh, might be able to get it from this side. Oh, we might have got it. There's, a, there's an emulsion tube and, and you can push it down from inside here. Um, usually the brass, but this one's plastic, which is actually quite good because modern ethanol fuels do tend to eat brass. Problem is, I've got it so far, it doesn't want to go the rest of the way. Oh, there we go. It's almost out now. Not far enough. Just with the uh, the throttle plate that I've I've got to try and get past, it keeps popping back down again. Try and get it out on one of these. There we go. Yes, yeah, so you can see that they're plastic. What we'll do is we'll just give that a quick blast out. I won't be putting that in the uh, so it's got two there. I would have thought it would have had some holes up here as well. Interesting. <laughs> it's effectively how it sits that that piles up into the back of there and, and squeezes down on that creates a seal and then it, it blows past that but usually has some holes in the end as well so i'm not entirely sure why, why that's like that one not seen one like that before they're very similar to motorbike carbs more than any more than car carbs Right, uh, throttle we don't care about that much, we'll leave that in place. That's the mixture screw, so what we do need is to get that in and back out again. So we'll just see what it's, we'll wind it in first, so that's... Oh, that's fully in. That can't be the mixture skew, the screw then. That's wound fully in. Can't see any other screws. Maybe it's not the mixture skewer. But that would explain why it's not working if it's wound fully in. Uh, that looks like the idle jet. Yeah, I would say that's the idle jet. Low battery. Right, let's uh, un undig the uh, Yeah. That doesn't look good. That's what happens when you use organic. Uh... Yeah. Right. Well, your battery's going flat. I'll clean this and uh, sort you out.
I don't know what I don't know what I cut off then. Let me let me show you what's going on in here. Well, that's cooking away nicely. Cleaned all the mould out. Um, I'm stuck now. Um, I don't want to be recording while that's going because it's really loud. Um, and I need a I need a clean space now to uh, put the carburetor back together. So I'll have to clean this lot off. Um, I've also got to find the carb kits I've got to see if there are any bits that I can chuck on. Um, and it's quite late as well, so I'm going to call it a uh, an evening and we're going to crack on. I've just realised that's floating around there and I need to move that. And I can't even remember what's in this box. That's the salt patch kit. Right. So, um, we'll probably carry on uh, either tomorrow, well not tomorrow, over the weekend at some point. Um, when that's cooked enough and we'll see where we go with it.